My blue lock takes zero to 100 percent. You guys are all probably wondering, what does that mean? Now, zero to 100 percent basically means that I'm going to be going from 10 percent, which is the least hottest take of them all, to 100 percent, which is probably going to be my hottest take yet on this channel. Now, if you guys like this type of content, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you don't like this content, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe anyways, because we're so close to 2000 subscribers. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into this shit. Coming in at 10%, we have first selection Nagi is a lot better than first selection Baro. Now, a lot of people might have freaked out at that take already and been like, bro, this whole list is about to be a disaster. But listen to me, I'm going to cook here. Yes, I understand Nagi had a better team, but let's give Nagi, let's give Baro's Nagi's teammates. Let's give him Rio and let's give him Zantensu. Yes, I know when Rio and Zantetsu would get the ball, they'd be able to score goals, right? And Nagi wouldn't really be able to score without them. I understand that, right? But at the end of the day, we're acting like Baro is actively going to start using these two to help assist him. Baro is going to try scoring on his own free will. We've seen in the second selection many times when he could have linked up with Isagi and scored an easy goal, but he chose to go on his own against Kunigami. So we know that Baro is a selfish player. And in the first selection, I'd argue that his selfishness was fucking crazy on a whole different level. Because at this point, no one had even challenged his pride or authority at all. Nobody ever even tried that shit. So I really think that Nagi and Baro, Nagi and Baro also ended up scoring the same amount of goals in the first selection, both being the joint top scorers of the first selection. On top of that, the narrative impact that Nagi had when he when he was the last opponent that they faced, the last obstacle, the unbeaten team. So I just feel like Nagi is much better than Baro in the first selection. He's a team player that you want on your team. His trapping was almost OP, and when he gets motivated, he does shit like this to Nico. So it's just like, bro, I do feel like Nagi is better than Baro by a long shot in the first election. Coming in at 20%, we have Batra cannot be the number one option on a team that wants to win. I just noticed that right now I sound like ESPN. But listen, I'm going to keep it a buck. If I want Batra to be my favorite, like the star player on my team, and I have to build the team around him, there's almost nine times out of ten that Batra being the best player on that team, that team's not going to be the best team like you can assemble. Because simply because it's like building, okay, it's kind of confusing to talk about, but it's like building around Damian Lillard when you can build around Luka Doncic. You know what I mean? Why would you build a team around a star like Damian Lillard? Yes, he's a star. He's a good player. But the number one on a championship winning team is just like, you know, you could go for a better option there rather than building with someone like Luca, who's clearly a better player. You know what I mean? So it's like, why would you build for Botcher to be your number one player when you know he's just not that dominant? He's not that dominant. I look at Botcher the same way I look at like a Kyrie Irving, you know? He has a whole lot of handles. He has a whole lot of moves. You know what I'm saying? His shot is... <laughs> it's mediocre to say the best. It's mediocre. But his dribbling and passing are good. But he's not a striker. That's the thing about Batra. He's not a guy that can go out there and just farm goals for you. Yes, he'll score. He'll score. He'll definitely score. But he's not farming goals and winning single-handedly winning teams the game. He's not doing that. Anyways, we're moving on. Coming in at 30%, Noel Noah is overrated in the verse. What I mean by this is, bro, there's no way. <laughs> and I do understand that we haven't seen Noel Noah's full capabilities in the NEL. But there's no way that we just allowed a guy who is ambidextrous to become the best player in the world. There's no way. Like, there's absolutely no way. Kunigami is virtually ambidextrous. And he's nowhere near Noel Noah's level. But Noel Noah's ambidextrousness gives him a whole new level plane of, of just skill. Like, there's no way. Bro, Noel Noah is such a terrible coach, too. He talks about being rational, but constantly goes back on his word. And we have this dude just whenever he does come in, I think he's only, he's only scored in one of the games so far. He's only scored in one of the games, and that was the Barcha game. So, yeah, I do think that Noel Noah is very overrated in his verse. And I feel like once we see more pros and more people, I feel like Noel Noah is going to fizzle out. And by the end of the series, he might not even be top five in the verse. Coming in at 40%, we have 
Tagiri will be the fastest player in the series by the end of the series. Now, this is a take that I think might be a little bit more understandable for a lot of you since the last couple of takes were pretty hot, I won't lie. But this one, I feel like should be more understandable. Now, the first question that comes to mind is probably, oh, will he be faster than Loki? Loki is literally teleporting around the field. And my answer to that is, bro, if Tagiri reaches his top like full 100% before ACL form, right? I have a feeling that Chigiri will be at that level. Chigiri's main weapon is speed. I don't even know what Loki's main weapon is, but I don't think it's speed. You know what I mean? I do not think it's speed. I feel like it's something else. It's, I don't know. Maybe it's his long stride, something like that. But all I know is that Chigiri's main weapon is speed. So I feel like the guy who represents speed at the end of the series should be the fastest player. You know what I mean? That's just his specialty. Now, that is, of course, if he makes it to the end of the series and doesn't blow his, a his ACL in the next fucking tournament. But, yeah, man, as it, as it stays going right now, Chigiri is on his way, for me, to becoming the fastest player in the series. Bar none. Faster than Loki. 50%. Shido Ryusei is a system player. Now, a lot of people heard that and just raised their eyebrows at me, asked me what I'm talking about. But it's okay, guys. We have to take a step back, put our bias to the side, just grab your bias and throw it out the window. Because listen, this dude, every time we've seen Shido play, he's played with a great passer and dribbler of the ball. Okay, I don't know about dribbling for Charles, but a great passer of the ball. And that's how he thrives. In the third selection, yes, we've seen him score some crazy goals, but that's the third selection. In a real comp game, this dude Cheeto has only ever been on teams with some of the best passers in the series so far. Itoshi Sai and Charles. So I feel like this dude Cheeto really needs a person who can really pass the ball to actually even succeed in a comp 11v11. I feel like that's the case for him. Considering we haven't even seen him dribble the ball once, I really do feel that this guy is just a run around in the box, lob the ball up to him, he'll score a volley, he'll find a way to score it. Now, I'm not saying that being a system is system player is a bad thing. Listen, there's a lot of people in the game of football IRL that are in a system, and they make they are the reason that system works. You know what I mean? That's perfectly fine to be a system player, but I'm just pointing out. That if you take that passer away from Shido, I really want to see how Shido is going to perform without one of those passing demons. Will he, will he still be on the individual level of someone like a Baro or Rin or the people he's compared to? Or will he fizzle out and sort of become mediocre? 60% Kunigami versus Shido has been very underwhelming. Correct. I don't know about everyone, but when I seen Kunigami come back, after being eliminated by Shido so savagely in the in the 3v3, in the 2v2, I mean, in the second selection, I thought this guy was on demon time. And when it was revealed that this guy was literally in the wild card and has the same attributes as Noel Noah, I was also even more hyped. But then when he turned into a goddamn fucking tap-in merchant, yeah, you guys might be saying, oh, but he's not a tap-in merchant, bro. Uh, Isagi was going to miss anyways. He just need the ball in. Yes, I understand that, but it's still a tap -in at the end of the day, isn't it? Like, it's still a tap -in. Either way, what has Kunigami even done for the Ubers? I've said this before. He didn't do... I don't remember him doing anything in that whole game. I'm not going to lie to you. Now, in the PXG game, he is putting in work. I'll acknowledge that. But then again, when I imagined his matchup with Shido after he came back looking all demonic and shit... I thought that these two were going to go head to head talking shit on either end of the field and it wasn't going to be a striker, previous striker, previous poacher, previous guy who could shoot from outside the box and score every time almost would be reduced to a freaking defender. Does that sound right to you guys? Kunigami, the dude whose special ability back in the day was shooting from long ranges. You know, yes, he had a great physical too. He was able to play defense. I won't say that this wasn't foreshadowed, but I will say that it's underwhelming that a player like him has now become just a defensive player. And his matchup with Shido is mainly just locking him up. I would have really liked to see these two going on opposite ends of the fields, guarding each other and trying to score on each other as well. Other than Kunigami just becoming 
kind of just like you know just he's just there to stop shido now in this PSG game i hope you guys know kunigami is not even gonna take a shot at the net and nonetheless he's not scoring either either way man we're moving on 70 percent we finally have a positive shido take because this take i have is shido's u20 performance is better than any borrow performance in the entirety of blue lock now i know a lot of borrow fans are mad at me they're like what are you talking about? You just said he's a system player. Listen, I did say he's a system player, but I didn't say that there was anything really, really bad about that. Football is a game where there's a lot of systems and schemes in play all the time. So being a system player isn't inherently bad. All I'm saying right now is I'm talking about his performance. Shido came into that game for one half. One half. And he was able to have two of the most stunning goals in the series. I think in a space of 13 minutes, he scored twice. Two of the most crazy goals and completely flipped the game on its head. Single-handedly. Well, double-handedly with Yutoshi side by side. But still, I still haven't seen Baro do anything like this. And I know people are going to point out to the Ubers versus um, Bastard Munchen game where he scores that shot and takes the team into his own hands. Yes, he did that, but there was never any doubt. <laughs> never any doubt. That Bastard Munchen would win that game. At least for me. I really didn't feel any suspense when Barrow scored because I, it was more of like a oh, it was meant to happen. Like he was gonna score again nonetheless to up the stakes, but not as much as Shido up the stakes when he put them up 3-2 by scoring a 50 feet out bicycle kick on the blue lock eleven. We also have to look at the level of competition. Barrow is playing a higher level of competition, but at the time Shido was playing the craziest blue lock lineup we've ever seen. All these 11 players that have been ranked throughout Blue Lock are playing against Shido Ryusei and Itoshi Sai, basically, along with Oliver Aiku. Three players versus a whole 11 like squad stack. Now, I know Itoshi Sai is by far the best player on the entire pitch <laughs> at this point, but bro, Shido put in his work. Like It was hard for them to stop him. They put Rio on him. Rio kind of got cooked, but then Rio started locking him up. But still, bro, I'm telling you, Shido's performance... In the U20 game, in terms of quality of goals, in terms of impact on the game, in terms of stakes, in terms of raising your heart rate, Shido's performance was better than Barrow's. Given I just shit on this guy, I know you guys are probably saying, oh, wow, why are you switching up? 80% we have Neo Egoist League Barrow is better than Neo Egoist League Ren. Now, obviously, a lot of people are probably, again, going to tell me, what am I talking about? Bro, listen to me. Rin has scored a hat-trick. Barrow has also scored a hat-trick. Rin got a brace in the first game. Sure, Barrow hasn't scored a brace because he didn't play that game. But listen to me. In the PXG game, I've got a glimpse of how Rin has been playing when he scored these hat-tricks, when he's been doing all this other shit. And I'm not going to lie, it kind of looks like Itoshi Rin has regressed as a player. Yes, he's been stopping Kaiser almost every time Kaiser's been trying to go up the field and absolutely destroying him. And he had that one thing where he went through everyone and almost scored. But here's the thing. After that, I think Rin's been non-existent on the offensive end of the field. And it's like he's waiting for Charles to actually wake up and help him out for him to score, which I really do think is going to happen. I feel like Charles is finally like, okay, well, Rin's in his destroyer state. Now he's going for the most exciting spot on the field. And that's where I'll pass it. I feel like that's exactly what will happen. But we're moving like Rin isn't Rin. Why are we moving like Rin can't get his goals individually? He doesn't need a guy like Charles. Back then, he was scoring through Nagi, Isagi, Baro, Chigiri all by himself. He did not need anyone passing him the ball. So right here, it's kind of like he's regressed as a player, in my opinion. Because Rin is kind of relying on his passer to feed him the ball in a good position so he can score. When Rin, you know yourself... You can do this by yourself. You just did it with Nanase. Also, Rin's, I think his obsession with Isagi is kind of overweighing everything else about him. Like, he could have easily scored here if he didn't grab Isagi and be like, oh, wow, look, VIPC, and then gets fucking blocked. Like, <laughs> Rin has just been overweighing on himself, bro. He really could score, but he's just been regressing. He just regressed, I think. Ever since he got obsessed with Isagi, I feel like that might be part of his character arc too. Like ever since he got obsessed with Isagi, he just hasn't been playing as good. And we've seen the U20 match where Isagi actually started surpassing him 
during that match and he's like fuck i can't have this shit happen and went destroy mode so bro i'm really hoping that rin has his bounce back in this game because at this point it looks like rin has significantly regressed as a player and borrow on the other hand has significantly gotten better as a player not only is he the only striker on his team and the only like real threat offensively outside of maybe i guess nico he also completely turned the team against the pro mark snuffy he turned that team completely by himself by bringing a goal out of absolutely nothing listen i respect him for that and i feel like that goal is something that rin just hasn't done yet in this NEL. He hasn't done anything as impressive as that Uber's performance. And I know it's the only time we've seen him play. But bro, Barrow has become a much more smarter player as well. Being able to use his predator eye to hide, stealth shot, and just take more efficient shots. You know what I mean? He's not the same old Barrow that will shoot from 40 feet out with a halfway line and miss and be like, fuck, I miss. Like, damn, that's a surprising miss. You know what I mean? He's now more cool, calm, collected knows when to shoot, knows when to pass, but in the end, it's all for his own goal. Anyways, we're moving on. 90% Metavision has dropped the overall quality of the Blue Lock manga. This has been on my mind for a while now. I won't even lie. But the reason that this has been on my mind is because I've just been looking at the recent freaking chapters and how Metavision has quite literally had people tele teleporting across the field. It was cool when Isagi did it and Rin did it, but now that everyone has this ability and when everyone masters it, it's not even going to be a surprise anymore when someone's about to score and then someone teleports right in front of them. I feel like back in the day, there was like a certain level of surprise, like a, oh shit, he's here. When someone was about to score and then Isagi or Rin would just come out of nowhere like, oh, give me that shit. Nope, you're not scoring. You know what I mean? It wasn't some sort of thing where, oh yeah, he can see everything on the field and come up with the best play right there. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I feel like Metavision makes the author a little lazy to explain everything that happens throughout the game. Because before, he was explaining every little move Isagi did. And now it's kind of like, oh, Isagi just appears in the spot because he sees it with his Metavision. Which I think is kind of lazy. But yeah, I do think that Metavision has lowered the quality of our matches lowered the thinking that we've seen our characters do do out throughout the matches and overall just lowered the suspense of the matches now this might change in the future with the u20 world cup arc i really hope we get a counter for metavision because at this point it's kind of like uh metavision is kind of like uncounterable like if someone sees like the best pass it's like okay he's gonna see that path it's up to you to just try and stop it you know what i mean or you just have to see it first but I really feel like there's something in the U20 World Cup that might be able to just completely counter Metavision, which would balance things out again. I feel like that would be good. Like Then you'll actually have to use your brain and work around the fact that Metavision isn't going to help you all the time and you can't just get like carried by it, kind of. Anyways, we're moving on. And if you know me, you knew that 100% would be a Nagi take. And my take, I think I've had this take for a while now. I think by the end of Blue Lock, Nagi will be a top two player, top two striker in the entirety of Blue Lock. Now, you're probably asking me, what the hell? What makes you think this? What make you think this? Bro, I know that Nagi has the most potential out of all these Blue Lockers. You can add Borrow, you can add Rin, all of them. Nagi has the most potential and the author has gone through thick and thin to try and show us this. Whereas every time Nagi's been motivated, he's done some of the craziest shit we've seen in the entire manga. The craziest shit we've seen in the entire manga. So I really do think that if Nagi is permanently motivated like this, that he every time he, he gets motivated, he touches the ball, he does something absolutely insane. I really feel like this guy will be top two in the verse, bar none. Not even close. It won't even like, bro, it won't be a debate that maybe Isagi and Nagi are top two. And I really do feel like, yeah, Rin is owning him right now. But when Nagi comes back and gets stronger, he's going to own Rin. I really do feel that. He's going to own Rin. And I feel like this is just the start of Rin's decline as a player because of his obsession. Now, once his obsession is over, I feel like Rin will get another like power up. He'll get a lot stronger. But, bro, Nagi, he's motivated. 
He's absolutely locked in. He won't lose to absolutely anyone except for the main character because of fucking plot. We all know this. <laughs> anyways, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. I'm almost at 2,000 subscribers. And yeah, man, if you guys had any problems with these hot takes, leave them in the comments below. And share this video to your friends, anyone who would like to see. And yeah, bro. Don't know. Have a good day, guys.